Hi friends, today we're doing Unit 7, Lesson 16, May Jemison. We're going to start by going over the key vocabulary words you'll be hearing in today's reading. Your first word is aeronautics, the study or practice of flight and aircraft. The next word is applications, written requests to be considered for a program or job. Our next word is engineering, the study and work of using science, knowledge, and methods to solve problems in the world. Our next word is pursue, to do what it takes to accomplish something. Our next word is refugees, people who flee to another country for protection or safety. And our last word is tragedy, a very sad event or disaster. We are now going to move into today's reading. When Copernicus was born in the 1400s, space travel was an impossible dream. Copernicus didn't even have a telescope, let alone a spacecraft. But thanks to the careful observations, logical thinking, and bold ideas of Copernicus and many other scientists before and after him, Today we live in an amazing time when dreams of space travel really can come true. Advancements or improvements in technology have made it possible for human beings to travel into space. Ever since Apollo 11 first landed on the moon in 1969, more and more astronauts have flown into space. Would you like to be one of them? Mae Jeminson's answer to that question was definitely yes. She dreamed about going into space from the time she was a little girl. And when she grew up, that's exactly what she did. In 1992, Mae Jemison blasted into space aboard the space shuttle Endeavour. She lived on the Endeavour for eight days and conducted or carried out many experiments while she was there. In these experiments, she carefully collected information about how weightlessness in space affects animals and humans. One of the experiments involved frog eggs. Jemison wanted to see if they would develop into tadpoles normally while in orbit. Mae Jemison was the first African-American woman ever to go into space. In fact, she was the first African-American female astronaut in the history of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. How did Mae Jemison make her child to dreams of space travel come true? Part of that answer was that when she was young, she read a lot about the things she was interested in. Jemison was born in 1956 in Decatur, Alabama, but grew up in Chicago, Illinois. As a child, Jemison was very interested in space. She was 12 years old when astronaut Neil Armstrong and his Apollo 11 mission landed on the moon. At age 14, Jemison was still interested in space, so she read many adult books about astronomy. At the age of only 16, she graduated from high school and went to college at Stanford University in Stanford, California. Education was very important to Mae Jemison. Education is also very important to NASA in choosing who will become an astronaut. While Jemison was at Stanford University, she studied, studied chemical engineering, which is the study of chemicals or substances and how they can be used to solve problems or make products. While she was at college, Jemison also enjoyed theater, dancing, and playing football with her friends. She believed it was important to be a well-rounded person, which means to study and enjoy many different things. Jemison graduated from college with a degree in chemical engineering and African-American studies. Besides wanting to be an astronaut, Mae Jemison also wanted to be a biomedical engineer. Biomedical engineers seek new ways to use technology to improve health care for people. When Jemison graduated from college, she thought about applying right away to NASA to become an astronaut, but decided to go to medical school first. In medical school, she traveled around the world providing medical care to people living in developing countries. As a medical school student, Jemison traveled to Kenya and Africa where she helped with community medicine projects in a very difficult area. Jemison also traveled to Thailand and Asia to care for refugees from Cambodia. After Jemison graduated from medical school, she worked for the Peace Corps for more than two years. The Peace Corps is a U.S. governmental organization that sends volunteers to assist people in developing countries. In the Peace Corps, Jemison was responsible for the health of Peace Corps volunteers working in West Africa. In 1985, May Jemison decided the time was right to pursue her dream of space travel. She applied to NASA to become an astronaut, but soon afterward, in January 1986, NASA suffered a terrible tragedy in its space shuttle program. The space shuttle Challenger burst into flames a little over a minute after it was launched. After this tragedy, all astronaut applications, including Jemison's, were postponed, meaning that NASA was not accepting any applications for new astronauts for a time. After NASA reopened the astronaut application program, Jemison found out she was chosen to be an astronaut in 1987. In 1992, after completing her space shuttle mission aboard the Endeavour, Jemison was famous. She was the first African-American woman to go into space. 
Jemison retired from NASA in 1993 to pursue some of her other dreams. Jemison had used her fame as a launch pad to bring important issues into the public spotlight. She founded an international science camp called The Earth We Share. Students at the international camp worked to help solve current global problems by using science and technology. She also started her own company, which seeks to develop technologies that benefit planet Earth and the people who live on it. But most of all, Jemison is a great example of how important it is to follow your many dreams. May Jemison is living proof that your dreams can literally take you out of this world. May Jemison is just one of many astronomers who have added to our knowledge and understanding of space in the universe. For thousands of years, humans have been curious about the celestial bodies and what lies beyond the Earth. Even now, there are man-made satellites, spacecraft, and even scientists in space performing experiments, gathering information, and taking pictures. What discoveries are yet to come? As we come to the end of our space journey together, there is still one question, what's next? As we learn more and more about our world, there could be a thrilling discovery waiting right around the corner. Will you be the next great scientist to contribute to the work of other scientists who have come before you? Will you become an astronaut and set foot on another planet or moon? Will you discover a new celestial body, a new galaxy, or a new way of thinking about our world? What's next? You may now move on to Unit 7, Lesson 16, Google Forms.